first spin model. Not, not one of them, she was it. Jerry has often been quoted as saying, Ponch was to Ford what Babe Ruth was to the Yankees when she first walked into the office. And she had on a black coat with velvet here, and a velvet hat, and a garnet bracelet and ring and necklace that her mother had given her to come to New York. And even looking as out of town as she did, you could tell that she was just going to be a star. She was just born to be a model. I was talking to her husband the other day, who is out in California, and uh, I said, Lou, why did you call her Punch? And he said, because Jean is so boring. <laughs> That's how she got to be called bon Punch. Uh, but he said, you know, she knew who she was. She knew she was a great model, and she took great pride in, in just being as professional a model as anybody who ever lived would be. And she did. She, she was. Uh, but he said, but when she came home from work, it didn't matter what time she came home, she cooked his dinner, she cleaned the apartment, she made breakfast before she went to work. She never, ever tried to be something other than a human being after work. And he said, you know, they were, they'd they been married, I guess about 50 years when she died. Just, it was just before her 75th birthday. And, and he said, never till the day she died did she ever stop thinking about him and his welfare. And he's always been very grateful to her for that. It was called The Girl Who Made a Mountain Out of a Mole. <laughs> She, she darkened it with an eyebrow pencil. And uh, it was on the cover of Vogue, a, a black and white cover of Vogue, the only really black and white cover I remember. And then it, they painted in the, the lips red. She worked for a lot of other people, but Penn's pictures of Ponch were just, uh, they were breathtaking. I, I love to look at them to this day. He said she was just a, a glamorous American girl in Paris when she was there. And I think of his fashion pictures. They're certainly some of his greatest. You know, there was nobody any better. There'll never be anybody better than Jean. I hated the 60s. Nobody ever hated anything more than I did. There was an influx of photographers from Europe, and they were arrogant. They truly were arrogant. I don't care how good they were as photographers. And they would, you know, take the girls out all night and then try to make them work the next day. The, the youth quake, I didn't know that it was a youth quake. It was a young look. You know, I was so used to disciplined models, girls who lived and breathed the business. They loved every minute of it. You know, they're never without their nails done. They were never without their makeup. You know, there weren't makeup artists like Kevin O'Coyne did back then. They did it themselves. That was their joy, you know, their dedication to what they were doing. The 60s were quite the opposite. We were in our 20s. So how did we ever imagine what would happen to the business, you know? You used to have an American look. You know, it's Cheryl Teagues, Christy Brinkley, uh, girls like that, where you could say instantly, oh, there's a nice American girl, you know? But today, the business has become so international that there is no American look. And besides, now the makeup artists and the hairdressers do whatever they want with them and make them look however they wish them to look. And so I, I, I doubt strongly that there is an American look.